I've always remained, really, the rehabilitation counselor I started as. And I became a rehabilitation counselor by the usual curious happenings, but uh, are not always uh, and happenings kind of curious. I, I applied for a job cutting grass at uh, a state mental hospital. And they didn't want to hire me for that, but they said, you have a college degree, how would you like to be a rehabilitation counselor? And I thought, what's that? And I said, okay. Rehabilitation counseling, it turned out, was about the most rewarding profession you could think of practicing if you wanted to actually help people. It had been invented uh, really after World War II to help veterans with disabilities, uh, mostly physical, get back into life, really get back into jobs. And it then spread generally to other people with disabilities in the country, in construction, all sorts of things like that. And the rehabilitation counselor job, uh, if you worked for one of the state agencies funded by the federal government, was uh, you sat there at a steel desk in a cubicle and a guy came in in a wheelchair and said that uh, he uh, had had an accident recently on a motorcycle and it broke his spine and now he's paraplegic in a wheelchair and uh, he used to be an auto mechanic but now he can't work and you could say hmm, it's good with your hands huh you ever run a business oh yeah i had my own auto business you know for 10 years did it do all right? Oh, yeah. I made money. Okie doke. Well, I'll tell you. How about this? How about if we send you to watch repair me in school? And you learn how to repair watches. That's back when people repaired watches and there was a lot of business. Uh, and uh, you come back and we will give you enough money to start your own business. And we will buy you a van that's accessible, hand controls, you know, has a, a lift on it, and uh, get you going. And uh, call if you need anything. And then, when by the time they had their business going, then you would 36 them. And 36 on the scale, the national scale of the stage of rehabilitation the person was at told you they were done. On to the next. Well, it was the only federal program that actually returned what was spent on it. As a matter of fact, the figure was, at that time, that, it, that the, uh, the vocational rehabilitation program to the states paid back in taxes, what had been spent on it 13 times during the lifetime of the person. Well, there aren't any other programs that do something like that. And it was so wonderfully common sense. But what it trained you to do was to separate the person from the disability that was in their way of being able to work in this case, and with it came a good life. And then see what you could do to help them overcome those things that were in their way with a little bit of help. Maybe sometimes a lot of help. But the orientation was, it was worth it. Now, some people, as uh, rehabilitation counselors started to see more and more seriously uh, injured people and impaired people, uh, this formula and thing didn't work anymore because uh, it wasn't returning people to the workforce in the same way that it had been doing. There were uh, different kinds of disabilities now, frankly. So at any rate, uh, this was so rewarding because you could see a person who was at their just maybe the bottom of their life 
and feeling totally worthless. And like maybe they were going to be an invalid forever and a burden to their wife and children. And you could get them going. And in the early days of this, you could see them become an important businessman in, uh, in town. Uh, see a person flush. So it was a really wonderful way to think about people. It was really new at that time. Uh, well, really, doesn't that really teach you to see, as I said, what is in the way of a person. And psychotherapy and psychoanalysis is, as has been long pointed out, uh, a kind of a, a kind of a disease entity idea. That there are these disparate kind of entities that are like diseases and you know you can rank them up and give a number to them and they're you know as different from each other as diphtheria is from whooping cough this is all silly of course but in its kind of a, a, a disease oriented mode what it doesn't see is what you see if you were a rehabilitation counselor and then later in the field of developmental disabilities it was an extension of that because the orientation of the entire field was that way see how you can help somebody with really significant disabilities impairments inability to speak uh, to help those people get a decent life, a decent life for them. And many times it would involve some kind of a job, which would be very rewarding to the person. And maybe not even a low-level job. Sometimes we could help people uh, get into uh, the professions, academia. At any rate, it all really came from that orientation. And uh, I'm sorry to see the field uh, is, of course, not uh, really what it used to be. But what stays the same, those were completely different social conditions. But it, I think, and the developmental disabilities movement to follow showed how you can look at a person and think about how you can practically help them overcome what the difficulties are and go on to have a good life. Really, isn't psychotherapy just as simple as that?